I want to introduce quickly one of our main projects where we are currently working at because I, I always get asked the question from uh, manufacturers and systems integrators, what is the right technology for what climate, what uh, panel should I use thin film in Singapore because the temperature coefficient is better and the low light level responsiveness is better. Uh, does this matter over time? Can you reap these benefits on system level as well? May may they exist on, on, on module level. And that sparked a, a project idea to say, hey, why don't we do this very thoroughly and look at the output of PV modules and PV systems in different climate zones and combine this with advanced indoor testing and try to find out whether we can find a method to test indoors and predict what will be the eventual outcome outdoors over time in, the ver in various climate zones. And this is what we call then the, the True Power project. And we got together a bunch of uh, high level research institutes, PV module manufacturers, equipment manufacturers to, to get this started. And we are very grateful for the Singapore National Research Foundation who is supporting this project also from the public sector side. Um, as I mentioned, CERES is uh, the leading applied research institute for solar in the region. Uh, but we not only do R&D, we also do specialized and professional services. And in the area of solar systems and PV implementation, we are doing quite a bit of technical due diligence services, owner engineer services for the implementation of large scale systems in the region. There's not so much in Singapore yet, as we saw earlier, but we are heavily involved in pushing solar here as well, we have founded a national solarization center to remove barriers in the market. So we are not a systems integrator, but we try to help the private sector as much as possible to remove barriers so that the, the natural market can, can flourish as much as possible by in, without any public help. Now going, f uh, looking at what we do in uh, the projects we came across in, uh, in the region, where we were involved in owner's engineer and uh, financing services, we see that there is a shift away from dollars per watt to dollars per kilo or cents per kilowatt hour. So we are not talking about the initial capital investment anymore. We are really moving to a more professional way of looking at the levelized cost of electricity, which is you add up all the costs over the, of the system, initial capital cost and uh, cost running operational cost over the lifetime of the system, which is 20 or 25 years, and divided by all the kilowatt hours you generate over this lifetime. And then you end up with the levelized cost of electricity. And coming back to your question, that depends certainly on the irradiance levels and on your cost of capital. But we are certainly in the range of 20 US cents or lower in this part of the world. And depending on the irradiance level, it could be quite a bit lower than that. But again, your cost of capital is a, is a major contributor to that. Uh, but we come to that. So when we look at the LCUE, then taking away, not, this, not talking about discount rate and the residual value for the time being, uh, most people talking about initial capital investment still, still today. They're saying, ah, it's too expensive and can do cheaper. La. Um, so initial investment, they may still discuss a little bit what is, the, what is the operating cost, but much less so the discussion is about the initial yield. How much does your solar generator yield over time? Uh, ye initially uh, yield, what is, your, what is your performance ratio uh, on day one? And what is your annual degradation over time, which exists? You can... Uh, you can try to fool your banker and say, ah, this is be, well, whatever we have on day one, that's going to be the same in 25 years. That's not the case. So you have to realistically look at these things. And if you picture, if you take an, an example case and do some sensitivity analysis by varying all the parameters, plus minus 20%, one parameter at a time and leaving the other constant, then you end up with a graph like this and yes, initial capital investment is a big contributing factor, no doubt. But initial yield is as important as the initial capital investment. 
So this is often forgotten and people say, yeah, I'll, I'll take the cheaper system anyway. That will, will fix this over time. Forget it. Your system will never ever be better than on day one. So if, if the initial yield and the system design and the component selection is not optimally, you're not gonna rectify this over time unless you take another uh, dollar, a few dollars in, in hands or quite a few dollars. So the initial yield and the degradation, which is not super critical, but still it's there. But the initial yield, this is absolutely critical. And that's one of the things what we are very deeply looking and where we have a lot of experience out from the field. And uh, just to give you one example from Singapore, where we have, there are systems, obviously, <laughs> 15 megawatts, and we have about 40% of those 15 megawatts under constant monitoring, on long-term monitoring how the system uh, behave. And then when you plot this, that looks like this. So we have a reasonably good system in the range of 82, 83% performance ratio, defined as the actual AC output over the maximum possible DC on that very location, given the irradiance. So 82, 83 is, is not bad. We actually have done some research and then tried to optimize. We have built a system which has 90% performance ratio without tricks, no shortcuts. So it is possible to have high performance systems here in Singapore, in the tropics, despite the high humidity, despite the constant high temperatures. So it is possible to do that. On the other hand, we see systems which are in the 55 or 60 percent range, which is simply uh, not acceptable. And if you have a bank financing, this system will not even allow you to, to pay back your senior debt. And in addition, the site C, for example, is a thin film system, the rest being crystalline silicon systems. For, for a thin film system, depending on whether you use the rated power, the flash test power, or any interim value of your installed capacity, you can basically generate any performance ratio which you want to hear. So again, you need to add a little bit more sophistication to, to really compare these, uh, compare different technologies on a fair, in, a, in a fair manner. Also long-term degradation. Uh, I talked about earlier that the long-term degradation is about uh, 0.5 to 0.7% in literature. We observe, depending on the technology, not all technologies, but we observe slightly higher values than that here in the tropics. This is on module level. Uh, on system level, we have ongoing research and we are soon publishing this. Uh, so this is also an important factor to know because if your degradation rate is 0.5% or 1% per year, this makes a bit of a difference in your levelized cost of electricity at the end of the day. Now putting things together, there is th these three measures. So you have to make sure that you have continuously high performance of your system and that starts with the system design and the, out, the output of your system on day one. Again, it's not going to get better over time. You have to think about what are the right technologies for the right climate conditions. And I must, I'm a firm believer that in the future we will have a discrimination of module technologies and module shipments, call it, uh, depending on the application and depending on the climate. Application meaning, today we have a one size fit all. Every solar panel that comes out of, a, of the, for example, the REC factory here in Singapore, which is almost a gigawatt top notch facility, the, the solar panel that comes out of that factory, you don't know whether this ends up in a, in a 50 megawatt utility scale, highly reliable solar power plant, or it ends up in a, with a rural peasant somewhere who is just happy to have two lights and a radio in order to power his solar home system. So this fellow may not need their high reliability for over 25 years, whereas for the utility power system, it's definitely required. So we will probably see some discrimination in the future by application as well as by region. Uh, looking at Singapore as an example, we not necessarily need a 5.4 kilonewton test for snow loads because we hardly have snow here in Singapore. We do have snow. There's a snow city, which is an indoors uh, indoor uh, bobsleigh area, um, but that's about as good as it gets. We have a little bit of wind loads, but that it will not justify 5.4 kilonewton. So you could do a lighter product with a lighter framing, for example, for, for the case of Singapore. 
Whereas in other areas, in more temperate climates, you may want to have this, where you have, where, where you have snow loads and strong wind loads. So there, there will be discrimination over time in, uh, by application and by region. And what we are up to is to, to really get to the fundamentals that you say these three main areas, the, the module technology, the system design and the system location, eventually determine what will be your outcome over time and eventually is the most crucial impact, influential factor for your levelized cost of electricity. And again, this is what counts over time. And especially if you're an investor and a long-term investor, uh, you're looking at the levelized cost of electricity, not anymore at the initial capital cost. And what we are doing in this project, and we, we, we started last year and it's going to, into the implementation phase, we, are, we, we, we do two, three things. One is we, we, we will have an expanded indoor test facility with much longer flash duration so you can uh, test different technologies in a fair and equal manner. We will have outdoor test facilities in, in the three major climate zones where we test both on module level and on system level in order to understand where you lose eventually every single electron. So at the end of the day we want to be accountable for every single green electron that comes out of this solar panel, where it gets lost and how we can uh, avoid the loss in the future hopefully. And then bring these two together and do a model that we, uh, that we can uh, design an indoor test, a suitable indoor test that predicts the long-term output in the various climate zones. And the three climate zones we, we see as the, the major ones today is the temperate climate zone, the tropical climate zones, because there's a major shift into the markets down here into the Sunbelt area, and then also desert area because there's so many places looking at Middle East, Northwest China or North, Northwest Australia, they have just amazing sunshine conditions and they cry for being harvested. It's brain dead not to do it actually. Uh, there is discussions that we may add a fourth location which would be relatively high altitude in the, in the mountains which is very beneficial for, the, for, for this semiconductor technology. So if I was a solar panel, I would like to live in the Himalayas because it's very high up, you have very strong irradiance, it's cool. Uh, so Himalayas is actually, that would be a, the place to be for if you were a solar panel. So the location, what we are looking at, so we, are, we have the temperate, out, so the temperate site will be in Japan, where we are working with AIST and they, will, they are developing an or well, they're building up a new uh, renewable energy research center. We naturally have tropical climates here in Singapore. So we, as you know, if you're coming from overseas by now, as you know, we live in a big sauna. So we don't have to pay to go to the sauna, we just step outside. Uh, and then for the desert area, we're working with the Australian National University and we have one site in the middle of Australia. You cannot get hotter and more desert than that. So these are the three locations. And uh, the features is we, we will have full comparability. So we will have the same identical setup in all different climate zones. So you, we exclude all, uh, all factors where you may be able to argue that the, the sites are not comparable or different measurement technologies are being taken. There have been tests out there in the literature where people test indoor and outdoor at, or test in two or three different climate zones. But then it's always different measurement technologies, nothing's comparable, nothing's standardized. And this will be standardized. And if, uh, when I introduced this to the, to the European Union and the, their research center and the EPIA, they, they said, well, guys, you're on the right track. We, we talk about this for decades. Finally, someone does it. And we are, really, we are proud that we are the ones to, to really spearhead such a, a, a project. So we will want to see what are the different effects we will have on uh, an amazing amount of uh, sensor technologies because you have to understand what are your environmental conditions in order to do this fair and technologically advanced comparison. And we also want to get to the bottom of uh, what is the impact of the seasonality, what is PID, potential induced degradation, which is one of the buzzwords at the moment, which, uh, draws, which uh, affects certain PV technology technologies quite badly. 
and really want to make sure that we have a full understanding of what, what technology is best for what climate zone. The project has started. We are currently deploying the outdoor test or, or signing up the final uh, agreements for the outdoor test facilities and we are, we are ramping up the, or we are, we are getting in the indoor test facility and we will then start by, uh, in the second half of this year, we will start all the, all the measurements. Uh, at the moment, the Alliance has, uh, they are also the project partners, so we have serious spearheading this. So in terms of R&D institutions, we have the leading institute in Japan, we have the leading institute in Australia, we have a certifying body on board, which is the German VDE. We have equipment manufacturers here and we have initial PV module suppliers, which is both crystalline technologies as well as thin film technologies of various, various kinds. And the aim is really to, 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 to revisit how we, how we measure modules, how we measure systems out to how we compare the different outcomes across different climate zones to get to the bottom of what, the, what technology is best for what application and for what climate zone. And we have uh, managed to get key stakeholders on board for this project. We are also involved in the TC82 uh, workgroup 2, which is the one which defines the European standards. So if you have a PV panel, it's normally certified according to IEC 612.15. And the group, uh, the group here in the TC82, that's the one who set these standards. So we are closely linked with them so that any new clue which we get from this project can immediately uh, be integrated into standards wherever it's applicable. And eventually, and that's where the name comes from, we want to understand what is the true power <laughs> that comes out of, this, uh, out of the modules and out of the systems in the different climate zones. And that's the ultimate goal, to have a, a neutral and fair comparison of technologies. And this is of interest not only to the manufacturers, but especially also for system developers for systems integrators and eventually the, the finance community because they have to open their pockets in order to make this happen. And everyone is, is welcome to join, be it manufacturers or systems integrators or PV, the, the finance or reinsurance community, more than happy to join this project. And with that, I thank you very much for your attention and I'm more than welcome to, you're more than welcome to answer any question which you may have. Thank you very much.